My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a veterinarian in Marietta, Georgia. I treat dogs and cats, but I have a specialty in fish health. Uh, I'm so tired of saying that. I say that at the beginning of every video. This video is going to be uh, basically an auto, audio narrative, which I am then going to put to a few graphics and a couple backup text screens. I'm shooting this in the car on the way to work, making use of the commute. The purpose of this video, by the way, is uh, Dropsy. Uh, apparently, it's one of the things that sends people to YouTube a lot uh, to figure out what to do about Dropsy. And there is a ton of information about Dropsy on, on, uh, on YouTube and on the Internet. And I thought that what would be good is to talk to you a little bit about why Dropsy happens, what's actually going on in the fish, what could be going on in the fish, and uh, if you want to be pretty well versed at Dropsy, you, might, you could have a pen and paper handy because over the last 22 years of practice in fish health, I've seen a lot of Dropsy, so to speak, and it's not a simple subject because, well, for one thing, a lot of what people see isn't Dropsy at all. So let's just define Dropsy and figure out whether or not that's even what you're looking at. Uh, and you would think that it's very obvious, but not necessarily. Dropsy is a condition often in goldfish, other pondfish, but it can occur in um, other species of tr tropical fish as well. Uh, it's a condition where the belly distends and swells, and then, and here's the key part, all of the scales stand up all over the fish. That's the thing. People see fish with a great big belly, and they figure it's dropsy, and then they endeavor to treat dropsy with green peas and metronidazole and increased temperatures and all this other stuff, which turns out if it is dropsy, can sometimes be successful. But if the belly is just big, that can be so many other things. So, okay, one of the hallmarks of dropsy is a big belly with a scale standing up all over the place, but... A lot of times the scales aren't standing up all over the place. And if that's the case, then it's not dropsy, and I'll tell you why. Dropsy, by definition, is massive water retention by the goldfish. Let's just talk about goldfish as the primary victim of dropsy because actually they are. Um, scales stand up all over the place because the fish is taking on water. Basically, the fish is getting waterlogged and taking on water, and especially under the skin, and the scales stand up all over the place. The reason the fish takes on water is because of a problem with one of two things. Either the kidney is being ruined by bacteria or another parasite called Mitraspora saprini. That should pop up on your screen as I'm talking. It's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, coming from memory like a sporozoan parasite. Uh, gets in the kidney and screws it up pretty bad. Not terribly common. Uh, the most common cause of dropsy is going to be the ruin of the kidney, um, say by bacteria, or decreased synthesis of protein. One of the ways the fish stays, um, keeps from uh, taking on too much water is that the blood is, is kind of thick. And it can keep water from diluting the bloodstream by producing a lot of proteins called albumin. The liver produces the albumin. Uh, if something happens to the liver, then the albumin isn't produced. And then the fish becomes hypoosmotic and takes on a ton of water and can't uh, push it out as easily. So, And then you might say, well, okay, how would I know whether it was kidney or liver? And I would say, y you don't, really. Um, realistically speaking at home, if your fish has dropsy and the scales are standing up all over the place, suffice it to say, it's taking on water. It could be liver. It could be kidney. And relative to liver and kidney issues in goldfish, those are really hard to turn around, really hard. Now, it happens from time to time when you utilize an antibiotic, for example, and injectable antibiotics are your best chance. Um, it happens sometimes that you'll actually pull a fish around because the damage to the liver or the kidney isn't that bad, and the fish will osmoregulate again. 
the problem is it's likely to happen again unless you figure out what happened to water quality to make it uh, get dropsy in the first place. So you make sure you check your water uh, and the environment for crowding, overfeeding, etc., to make sure that the fish isn't continuously under stress and getting dropsy again. The second time the fish gets dropsy, that's going to be it. It is very rare to pull a fish around dropsy a, 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 a third time because each time they go through dropsy, their liver or kidney takes more steps back. Um, the primary cause of liver damage in goldfish is tuberculosis. It's a very common mycobacterial infection. Mycobacteria means it's kind of like a bacteria, but not exactly. It's very common. It's spread by cannibalism, even among baby fish when they're eating um, some of their little brothers, because not all the little baby fry survive, and so the other fish have a tendency to pick them off. So it's transmitted from fish to fish very early, and tuberculosis usually is fine. It, it just exists in granuloma in the liver, until or unless the fish is handled a lot, chilled, stressed, water quality deteriorates, it's in an environment that is stressful. Then the tuberculosis takes over, kills the liver, the liver stops producing albumin, and then the fish takes on water. Not a lot you can do for those guys. Or bacterial infection in the kidney makes it very difficult for a freshwater fish to expel all the water it has to. And then the fish takes on water. Now those guys sometimes you can help with injections or treatments with antibiotics. Um, and some people use metronidazole in a bath and sometimes that gets into the system to the extent that bacteria can be set back and the fish can recover. So increasing temperature to a healthy immune system supporting 76 to 78 degrees with increased aeration and metronidazole sometimes results in improvement. But stick a pin in that and let's backtrack to some other causes of what you might call dropsy, the treatable ones. Sometimes what happens is costia, in particular, can get on a, a, a goldfish or koi in such massive numbers in the skin that the skin is damaged, the mucus coat goes away, and the parasite is feasting on the epidermis to the extent that without the mucus, the fish starts taking on water in the skin, and the skin stands up. The belly isn't quite as swollen, but the skin and scales stand up, and it looks very much like dropsy. But the thing is, when you look at that fish closely, you'll see that the skin is kind of torn up, that there's redness in the skin. You can see the skin itself is diseased, whereas a lot of the really classic dropsies, the fish looks pretty normal, except it's pine toned up, is what they call that, when the skin uh, takes on water and becomes edematous and the scales stand up. But let's just say it's costia, or let's just say you don't really know, and you increase temperatures to, say, 76, 78 degrees, and you put metronidazole in the system where the goldfish is being held, and then you treat with clout. Well, the clout goes in and kills parasites that could be chewing on the skin. It may allow the slime coat to uh, take back that damaged tissue and the, when the slime coat recurs because the costi is gone, it may be possible for the fish to osmoregulate again. Some people will treat with low levels of salt and the belief is that it creates an kind of a closes the gap between the fish and the osmotic pressure of water, which it does because if you took a fish taking on water and you salted it to 0.3%, then the fish is going to take on just that much less water. Cure? I don't know. Kill some parasites on the surface of the fish? Probably. Increase slime coat? Probably. Help the fish osmoregulate? Probably. So what if when you had a drop sea fish, you were to heat it to 76, 78 degrees, increase aeration, apply something like Mardell clout, and uh, maybe even some baths in metronidazole. Maybe after the Mardell clout treatment, you move the fish into a dilute salt solution like 0.3%. And there's a video that I made on using salt in uh, tropical fish. Not at all crazy about it as a dip, but at 0.3%. What if you were to increase the salt to 0.6%? Well, if the fish is pretty strong, 
you're closing that osmotic gap a little bit more. In fact, twice as much as you closed it with 0.3%. <gasps> and what if you increase the osmotic pressure to 0.9%, which is exactly the salinity of blood? There would be no osmotic gap for that goldfish. And if it was strong enough to get to 0.9% and didn't die, you would see a marked improvement in the dropsy for a minute. Now, if the liver's shot by tuberculosis, as long as it's at 0.9%, it's likely to do okay, except a lot of the dropsy fish just aren't eating because they're very sick. And so the fish could just improve, but then slowly deteriorate over the next month or so, as long as it's at 0.9%. So is dropsy curable? Not so far. But you kind of get an idea of how these various treatments go together. Uh, as far as closing the osmotic gap, treating bacteria that could be affecting the liver and kidneys, and um, parasites that might be causing those scales to stand up erroneously. Because if all the scales are standing up, it might not be dropsy at all. It could just be water t uh, taking on water from parasite disruption of the skin and the slime coat. Um, so back around to one other thing, and that is the possibility that uh, a big belly goldfish Koi, uh, most anything else, could actually be a tumor. Koi especially love getting a tumor. They also love to get egg impacted, which means the eggs in the fish don't come out for a variety of reasons. Uh, the most common is that the ovary has to go uh, dump into the cloaca through a tube. And sometimes when the fish gets really gravid with eggs and doesn't breed, isn't run by the male, so it doesn't discharge those eggs, it becomes so full, the ovary becomes so full, that it crimps the tube to the outside and can't express. And so these eggs uh, proliferate under the uh, influence of various hormones in the system, uh, FSH and LH and all that other crap that we had to learn in school, but I have since forgotten. Uh, the eggs become even more numerous. The fish blows up with eggs and looks like it has dropsy, except, ta-da! The scales don't stand up. Uh, a fish, goldfish or otherwise, with a tumor or a blown up kidney, uh, kidney expanded by water, uh, overinflated air bladder, all of those things are going to cause the belly to expand. Um, when a kidney becomes hydronephrotic or full of water, you can diagnose that sometimes on an x-ray, or you can, and I, this is not appropriate, but you can randomly tap the abdomen with a needle and if you recover just frank yellow fluid, uh, you can pull that off and get that belly down a little bit. However, the initial pathology that caused the belly to fill with yellow fluid in the first place is likely to remain. And so again, while you make a temporary improvement in that fish, it's likely that over the course of the next week to month, it's going to just continue to deteriorate. Getting dropsy fish, dropsy from any of its many causes, getting them to eat is really hard. If you are trying to stimulate appetite in a koi or goldfish, the very best thing to do is use freeze-dried krill. Seems to be um, the most attractive thing. Shrimp oil, especially, um, and the krill are very, very attractive to koi and goldfish. Um, freeze-dried krill can be broken up or pulverized on the surface. It'll start to sink, and a lot of times goldfish will go after it. Um, some goldfish that have a, a dropsy will feed on the bottom, and when the um, uh, krill finally sinks down there, sometimes they'll take that. If you have a bottom feeding dropsy case and you want to, and it's eating anything at all, you can put blood worms on the surface. They sink almost immediately. Blood worms are sold at uh, the big box pet stores in their little freezer there. They're red chunks, and when they thaw, they, they um, are tube effects or blood worms. They're pretty cool. Goldfish take them really, really well. Uh, so when you're trying to feed a goldfish off the bottom, uh, please consider bloodworms and or frozen brine shrimp also sink to the bottom most of the time. The only time you'd find that that isn't so much the case with brine shrimp especially is when you've salted the tank heavily. Uh, the brine shrimp don't sink very quickly. So you kind of get the idea that dropsy isn't as simple as going, ah, oh, my fish has a big belly, it's dropsy, ah. Uh. And you kind of get the idea that dropsy comes from very bad abdominal pathologies. That to take on water is usually a very severe parasitism 
or a significant bacterial infection, or bacterial infection and or irreparable damage to the liver and decreased synthesis of protein. Dropsy just isn't that simple. But sometimes people say, ah, oh, cured dropsy, and they did through the ju judicious use of uh, heat, 76 to 80, 78 degrees, uh, salting to close the osmotic gap, a parasite treatment like clout at least once or twice, and then salting uh, to increase the slime coat and close that uh, uh, skin, uh, create a more uh, effective osmotic barrier uh, to help that fish to recover. And um, sometimes you can pull those guys around, which is nice. But I've, I've seen in practice a lot of times that you pull a fish around from uh, dropsy, and by the time you've excitedly told everybody that I saved Waldo from dropsy, if you ask about it six weeks later, they go, well, he went on and died. That's because usually the pathology under a dropsy is quite significant. So you might say, well, what can dropsy do for me? What, can, what does dropsy mean? Dropsy, sometimes dropsy doesn't mean anything. I mean, it just something happened to the kidney or the liver or whatever, and uh, it wasn't stress-related. But when you see dropsy, it is a great time to assess the environment to make sure that it is biotopically correct, environmentally, um, as far as tank mates, temperature, water quality, high levels of background pollution, too infrequent water changes, uh, all of those things can create a stressful environment and are still creating a stressful environment for your other fish. So lest you should have other fish going with dropsy because of chronic stress, try and figure out what that chronic stress was. In other words, dropsy can be a harbinger of an environmental deficiency. So while you're struggling to save a dropsy, please struggle to improve the environment the fish are in. This is, I believe, plenty on dropsy. I would love to see the comment section fill up with other suggestions on dropsy because it is a desperate situation. And let's just say you're having replicable, in other words, more than once success with a dropsy case. Put it in the comments. I will approve just about any idea, any crazy, let's try Epsom salt dips, whatever, uh, because... The prognosis for dropsy is very low, and if you're having luck with anything, uh, it's worth sharing with other people. So put it in the, in the comments. I'll approve it. And then um, subscribe to the video because I'll probably end up doing another dropsy video with some of the updated ideas that people have come up with and any feedback that they're getting replicable results. Uh, like the video because that will push it up through YouTube to try to get it in front of other people, and I would also greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for spending 17 minutes and 52 seconds with me.